Hi everybody. It's Mandy and I'm playing around with some colors. And if it works on this tile, I might actually stop being such a chicken and try one of my wood rounds. This is an 8 inch cradled wood round from Lily Bethy that my husband bought me probably a year ago. And I just <laughs> recently primed them because I'm like, okay, I need to use them. So, I don't know which one of these videos will go up first, but yesterday I finally used this color for the first time. That one will probably come out first, but this is the Golden Honey Prism Pour, and it's pretty delicious from Color Art. And I finally got some traction on this bluish gold bloom I've been trying to achieve for a very, I say a very long time, probably not that long, but... So I'm going to use that color today, again, as one of my regular paints. So Prism Pour, if you're not familiar, are already mixed up acrylic paints that Color Art sells. There are eight now, and they're all amazing. And um, for blooms, I do get this question a lot, for blooms I mix... I mix it with a little bit of my pouring medium. You could mix it with a little bit of polypour because that has varnish in it, so it's a good bloom base. I just, I I tend to mix up my own bloom base, <clears throat> so I always mix it with whatever I already have, and then I save my polypour for other pours. This is Interference Gold from Color Art. It's a little thick. I don't have anything. It's it's thick because I mixed it thick and it's been a while since I've mixed it. And then we're going to use as Pink Azalea from Color Art. I've had this color for a while and I super love it. But I don't know that I've used it in a pour. I've always wanted to. I don't know if the camera is really picking up how pretty that is. This ring light, I'm having a hard time finding the best position for it. Um, Because I didn't... I'm not in the usual place because I don't want to drag everything out. Today's actually my husband's birthday and he's in there doing homework. So I'm in here painting. So we're going to use pink azalea. This is a primary elements color from Color Art. And so we have two paints, two primary elements and a primary element interference color. This is pomegranate from Color Art. Ooh, look at that. And then my other paint, I actually just got this today, is Matisse Indigo, which is like a super delicious blue. So, that is what I have in mind. I'm going to use a white cell activator. I pondered using this color at the bottom and then using a light gold cell activator that I mixed up a week or so ago because it, it's going to have to be used in something soon. Um, but I want to do this first because that one's kind of old so I want to see how this turns out with a new cell activator. Um, if I didn't have to get up and go get the tiles, I would show you how the other one's dried, but anyway, I need to stop taking too long because if I end up doing a, a, a grown-up painting on a, that round, this video will be long. But first, let's see if the colors are going to pan out. And then, if they are, then we'll know. So here's our pillow paint. This is Glidden Premium Semi Gloss. I'm going to switch to eggshell, but I still have some stuff in there. So then I'm going to do the Golden Honey. And I'm going to drizzle a little because I'm also going to put some Interference Gold. I'm going to come back to this one in a second. I 
I love when there's like a good little pot of interference gold. I love the way it looks under resin. So pretty. Okay, so now I gotta think through this a little bit. Um, I want to finish for the most part with the, the indigo. So I think we will do the pomegranate, pomegranate next. Now I'm going to drizzle on purpose because when I put the azalea, pink azalea on there, I kind of want the cells that come through the blue to be a little bit multi-dimensional with the, the pomegranate and the pink azalea. And because the pomegranate is such a dark color, I don't want it to completely overpower this color. And I love the way primary elements, and this, these are the, 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 I'm using a lot of color. Sorry, I'm like super distracted, so I'm just throwing paint everywhere. Um, these are not the putting on the glitz, so these are not the semi-opaque, so they're going to be semi-translucent. So I'm trying to use that to enhance the pore, so that semi-translucent is not a bad thing. It is a good thing because it's going to pick up all the color in the pore. So I want to enhance that. So the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to make a whole layer, but I'm just going to like do that. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all know, but it is super hard for me to not use like too many colors. And I think it's because I start looking at colors and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know what else would look good with this? And then I just like, I do too many and then it's hard to, to maybe see the same de definition that you would see. I'm only doing a couple. And sometimes the colors can't be like the star of the show that way because there's too many. So, I mean, there's benefits to both, obviously, but I'm drizzling on purpose because Kind of the same thing I told you guys a second ago. But that's that's why I need to sometimes, you know, maybe narrow it down to some main colors. And then if we want to throw an interference or something in there. Some of my favorite, favorite, favorite color tests have been like four, three or four colors. And that seems so minimal to me, but it's so like normal for most people. So I just mixed up this cell activator today because most of my white was kind of old. So this is about a three to one ratio, um, Amsterdam titanium white to Australian Floetrol. One part. Uh, I kind of go more by consistency now than measures, but you can kind of tell when you've got your consistency right because you get this like little halo effect. And I tend to use too much cell activator. I don't know if you can see that halo effect. Yeah, you can. Okay, let me move the ring light so we have less shadow on this ah! other side. Sorry about the movement, I just bumped it. I'm going to use the little leaf blower. Color Art just released a new putting on the glitz set. So, woohoo! I probably shouldn't have started telling y'all about that right before I blow. I'll tell you more in a second. There's something about fresh cell activator that's just magical. This is totally different than yesterday. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. This is kind of what I wanted. I wanted the cell activator, which is the white, to absorb some of the color behind it. That's exactly what I wanted. So let me show you up close. The lighting is not great right here. Hold on. Maybe I need this over here. Really should not be in this 
room with not great lighting. So, my autofocus is wackadoo. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, I'm still trying to get better at not leaving that little vein there. That's what I was after, was that color combo. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the new set while we're spinning. The new set um, just came out. It's the second putting on the Glitz set. And there is, usually the sets have 12 colors. Um, so this one has 13. So as appreciation for um, customers, Color Art is basically giving you the 13th one free. Like, they're your Valentine. So that's super cool. So you can um, you can use our code, which is in the description box below. It's Mandy1120. And save 20% on anything on the Color Art website, including the brand new set. And uh, put on the Glitz colors, if you've never used them, are semi-opaque. So... They're super sparkly and they're super fun to use. I can't wait to show you guys. So they should be here soon. And oh my gosh, these colors together are amazing. So let's spin it a little bit more. So this Matisse Indigo color is such a beautiful blue. I love blues and purples and teals and magentas, pinks but I can't seem to get away from some of those colors. So you can see I'm still struggling with my weird vein here. I think we're gonna have to spin this one more time. So part of that is because I'm using too much cell activator, but look at the lacing with brand new cell activator. It's pretty magical. I love the colors together. That little pop of interference gold looks really great. And the pomegranate and the pink azalea play so nicely with the gold and the blue. And I love the sparkle with the prism pour. Look at the sparkle running through. Oh, it's beautiful. So I still need to get better at not overdoing the cell activator. I always end up with a little bit in the middle. It also could be blowing it out with, with the little tools versus with my mouth where you could spread it out better in the middle. So that's in case you wonder why we do tiles so much. That right there is why. Because we want to get better at that. This is my favorite part right here. This corner is so like mysterious and beautiful. And the, my little bit of exposure to Matisse paints so far is that they play so well with cells. The cells, um, I've noticed the same with the Australian red violet from Matisse. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. Because it's just a really great paint, it seems to do great with creating these little peacock cells these, with great multi-dimensional structure they're just um i have some other things i've done with uh, i did a a test with australian red violet i didn't know i had paint on my hand and matisse ocean blue and a color art egyptian coin and uh, interference gold and it is hands down probably one of the, my favorites of all time and the cells are just the dimension of cells is really so beautiful like <laughs> I look at it and I can't believe I just can't believe it sometimes and I need to do it on a larger scale but it's different going bigger so I don't it's like I want to practice a little bit more and I really need to practice on the larger pieces but that's one of the ones I want to do on a larger scale. Look at that. Look at the colors. This is my favorite part right here. And you probably can't see it perfectly because of the lighting, but man, is it beautiful. All right, let's do at least one more. And then I think we might go ahead and go for the round. Of course, I've got a dirty turner now. I'll be right back. Okay. So I went and I got one of my 8 inch rounds and I taped the back with painter's tape. I am 
very messy with the back. So even though this is cradled, <laughs> I'm going to get paint in there. So I just went ahead and taped it like a regular wood round. Um, I do prime these. Um, this has like two coats of like paint and primer spray paint. Um, because they're good quality wood, but they're thin, so they can warp. So wood breathes, so a general rule is to prime them. I normally tape down the sides. Since there's paint on here, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be careful when I spin. And let's all hope that I don't spin it off of there, because I've done that before. All right, so I'm a little nervous, to be perfectly honest with you. So let's put the pillow paint down while I'm doing that. If you haven't taken Shelly's class, it's totally worth it. There's a 15% off promo code in the description box below. I believe it's Shelly RHD15. But double check. You might as well save some money and take the class. I get a lot of people asking questions. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely worth it. You might fully know how to do blooms and be doing them successfully, but the support that you get from the team, from the group, very worth it. And it just continues to increase and improve. And the more the group grows, the more the students are available to help you, especially if you're in different parts of the world. Now let me tell you one of my challenges. I either put too much pillow paint down or not enough. Too much. Um... The challenge with too much is you can overwork a design trying to get enough paint off so it won't crack. Not enough, you have to overstretch it to get the edges covered. These are not very deep edges, um, but my understanding is about a, a third or so of the surface is good. When you're spinning, you don't really have to have as much pillow paint, but like, I don't know if this will go out before this disastrous painting I did the other day. It's dark, girl kind of crazy and then it just really got bad because I couldn't leave all the pillow paint on so I don't know so part of me wants to put a little bit of the blue down just a little bit both of the paints we're using are semi-transparent so some of some of this is going to stretch out over this white and show color underneath, which is okay. Um, that's kind of what gives us some depth. So, I'm gonna put quite a bit of this. I'm actually gonna probably add some more gold on the top anyway. Don't know that I have enough color on here. I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm such a chicken. We don't get better unless we go bigger. I just got to keep telling myself that. And I just am getting blobs of paint everywhere. So I think that's probably going to spin off anyway. very messy okay so that's our pomegranate <clears throat> oh, and the pink azalea so pretty and part of the reason I think I get nervous about going bigger is because I'm fairly comfortable with this little small leaf blower. But the bigger you go, the more that little narrow mouth doesn't quite do it. So I brought in the Yeho and I brought in the, the little small blower, which is what I think I'm going to use. And 
come back over here. The other thing I notice when you go bigger is it's pretty important that your paint not be too thick because if it is too thick, um, your dryer has, or even if you blow with your mouth, it has a lot more difficulty getting the surface blown out properly and then you get these places that are kind of like that. Alright, the other thing I think that's a little bit of an adjustment if you're increasing your size is, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's still bothering me, is if you already go uh, heavy on the cell activator, it's likely that you'll go too heavy. Like, that's probably a, a lot. But... It's twice the size of a tile. So this is an eight inch round. And a tile, I usually do about a dime size. So in my logical mind, it seems right. And if you think about it, we still have to cover the edge too. So, all right, let's see. Worst, worst case scenario, I can pour over it, which we know I'm inclined to do. have that down yet but we're getting there. Oh I forgot I unplugged this little dude. <sighs> Maybe should have left it alone and just let it come back. I feel like me trying to blow that out is not going to work out. So, okay. So this is one of my better blowouts on a larger scale. Let me show you. I still have a lot in the middle. And I'm afraid that the force of the dryer is going to cause my lacing to break up. I, I don't think it will, though. Because it's not. It's really, really pretty. Like right here. Like right there. Kind of messed this part up right here, but let's see how it does. <clears throat> I'm on the fence, y'all. I really want that to straighten back out. Um. What the heck is this? It's like a little booger. Paint booger. And one thing you can do is mouth blow some places. So that it's easier to stretch it out. I think we should spin it gentle at first. Let it kind of evenly cover the edges. I gotta be honest, I don't hate it. The composition's a little wacky over here. So, but I don't... I don't want to overstretch the middle to get that. So I'm going to tilt it very gently. I think I need to be a little more gracious with myself that my composition is not going to be perfect. Like every single time, you know. I think maybe instead of tilting that I just need to keep spinning. And pillow paint was about right. We're covering most of the edge, so let's go. 
I don't want to like thrust that really fast either because while there's still a lot of paint on the surface, it really can cause the cells to get wonkier, as you can see. Um, so I kind of want to gently spin it because you can see that this is starting to kind of, instead of doing this, which is what I want, and this, and this, it's like, ah, I don't want that. So we're going to just spin gently. <clears throat> and again, one of the things I'm still working on is this weird vein in the middle. And I know that it's how it's blown out. So that's one of the reasons why we practice going bigger. There is still too much paint on the canvas. This part kind of is growing on me, to be honest with you, because the interference gold is showing a lot. And this part right here is really, really pretty. So I'm just going to gently spin a little bit. See if we can't get the edges covered and then one thing you can do down here is kind of help so grab some paint from the bottom kind of say hey come down here come down here mr paint and then when you spin it's just going to not have to work quite as hard to get there And don't worry about what it looks like because you're going to probably spin it off anyway. You're just helping it have something to hold on to to come down. You're just helping the, the kind of the gravity or the centrifugal force of it all. Whatever you want to call it. I'm tired. So there's a few colors I've tried that I want to do on a larger scale. And Lovely Beffy recently had their wood rounds for 50% off and I went a little bananas and bought some bigger rounds, some smaller rounds because I also super love doing swipes with the bloom recipe. And um, so yeah, and it's kind of easier on a round surface to... Okay, so now do we have enough paint off? I think we do. And you can probably see that the composition is starting to suffer a little bit from the spinning. So I kind of want to show you where we're at. <clears throat> this is not perfect, but I don't hate it. So let me zoom you out a little bit. Let's see. There we go. I don't want to drip on the carpet, but... I don't like where the cells are kind of going crazy, but this part right here, I love that. This is where I kind of messed up the blow, but that part right there I like a lot. Um, I like those little cells. I like little cells a lot. I don't like, <clears throat> let me see if you can see it. I don't like some of the composition of these cells. I like the the dimension, the color, um, but I think how I blew it out is part of that. So I need to try bigger pieces with blowing it out myself and with different blowers. I think I hovered over maybe some spots a little bit too much um, and I'm used to having a lot more control over how I blow it out. So overall I'm going to call it a win. I love the colors. This, the cells right here are really, really lovely. They have the um, indigo on the outside. Sorry, I have paint like all over my fingers. And there's all different kinds of colors. The prism pour is kind of laced throughout and it's refracting some of those other colors, which are really beautiful. So like right here, the prism pour is kind of teaming up with the pomegranate and creating like a copper color super beautiful and then right here I love that and so the places where I don't think the cell structure is great is the middle um I don't it's really the middle if all of it looked like this and like this I think I would really like it 
but some of that is just getting the, the blow down. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up and show you up close while I clean the drips off. Let me know in the comments, because you know sometimes I'm a happy to scrape things person. Is this something that you would keep and resin and sell, or would you paint over it? So I want your honest opinion. Did you like this piece? Did you like the colors? I am gonna finish the tile set probably off camera because this video is gonna be long. But is this something that you would have seen and been like, yeah, I like that, like the way that turned out? Or would you have been like, yeah, that was a good go, but uh, let's paint over it and see what we see. Here's the edges. The thing I struggle with with wood rounds is they're expensive, so to experiment with them and not like them is kind of hurtful, you know? So I like to practice with them, and then if I like them, then yes, absolutely resin them. But if I don't, then I will pour over them. Same thing with the gallery-wrapped canvases. I'll take a lot more chances on a level one canvas than I will a gallery wrapped canvas. But again, like you can paint over it and it will be fine. So ideally this would be finished with resin. It's cradled and can be hung up on the wall under resin. Some of the depth and dimension that makes it so pretty would really stand out. So let me know. Did you like it? Yes or no? You think it's a win, or would, should we paint over it? I'm gonna turn off the studio light. Here you go. It's a heck of a lot better than some of the stuff I've been seeing in my practicing. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you don't already. Um, our social media links are below and our new Facebook group is also below. So check out the description box. Thanks guys. All right, so I know I said goodbye already, but I went ahead and finished um, the coaster set. Well, I may report one of them, I'm not sure, but I wanted to share two of them that turned out really nice with you. So if you stuck around this long, I sped them up super fast. And I got to thinking about that wood round, and um, I think what kind of messed with the composition for me is that for some reason I went rogue and put the indigo underneath all of the colors and I feel like it really messed up the color composition. So instead of having a nice contrast, I felt like it sort of muddied up the rest of the colors. So it's probably inevitable that I'm gonna pour over it, but at least um, on this episode of uh, Mandy versus the dryer, I didn't lose so bad as some of the other times. So we're making progress. This one turned out super beautiful. It has a kind of a really weird cell in the middle, but much better composition um, than the first one and a lot less cell activator in the middle to, so we don't have that weird vein. So I just wanted to share that this was more what I had in mind than the first one. Again, the close-up is super fast, so sorry. This video is already long, so I didn't want you guys to be like, oh, okay, this is like the song that never ends. So this is the last one I recorded. Um, I recorded the fourth one, but the composition wasn't like all that breathtaking. So, you know, if it's not going to be exciting to look at, then boo-hoo. But I really like this indigo color. And I stumbled upon um, another list of colors with it that I had seen in another pour. So I'll probably do that group of colors soon. So there's it. There it is. This one, um, I really love how well we spun out the middle on this one where there's not a big chunk of cell activator so I feel like I'm getting the hang of not using too much of it. It's such a fine line because if you don't use enough you can't get it all the way around. So I also think I need to practice blowing it out myself too. So yeah, thanks again for watching guys.
Bye. Bye for real this time.